Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to World of Tanks here with another garage review this time of the Tier 7 Premium Russian Tank Destroyer, or one of them, the ISU-122S. Um, now the ISU-122S was one of the Berlin uh, Quartet when it was introduced. It used to be the Berlin Trio, comprising of the IS-2, the Cromwell B and the Rudy, however this thing was released in North America first and then we got it in the EU and then it's back because um, it's coming close to VE Day or Future in Europe Day aka the end of the war in Europe so the, the end of the war against the Germans. The Japanese continue fighting until VJ Day um, Victory Japan but I don't know they were, they were releasing this for something because it, it can't be coming close to the end of the war yeah, end of, the, end of the wars like ages ago. Anyway, anyway um, because VE Day is after VJ Day, and VJ Day was some other time. Oh, um, or is it? I don't know. I could just be forgetting it, probably. But um, anyway, so ignore the little, the little squashed tank silhouette thing um, on my tank there. Um, I don't have the mod to remove them from my tanks yet. Um, but anyway, so here you go. ISU-122S, there's the basics of it. Um, the ISU-122S has got a special um, uh, viewing model. As you can see, the um, looking at it from the front, the uh, front left um, track guard at the front here has been blown off, and um, looking at it from the rear, again, the rear left track guard has been blown off here. Um, based on the chassis of the IS-2, um, mounting a big 122mm gun, um, and it's a pretty good tank destroyer. Um, as you can see, I fitted a, a gun rammer and a gun lane drive, and uh, anyone that's used a 122mm Russian gun will know why, but um, I actually had to strip this thing off of my um, Jag Tiger 88, because, as you can see, I'm sort of strapped for credits because of some other things. But anyway, so... Looking at it here, survivability 870 HP is a large amount of hit points. Um, the AT-15A has got 1,050. Yeah, unsurprisingly, it is a British tank destroyer. Um, British tank destroyers do tend to have the most health out of anything. Um, let's have a look here. Other tier sevens. Well, let's have a look at another tier seven premium. You've got the uh, SU-12244 with uh, 840 HP, so uh, that's less. You've got the SU-100M1 with um, 830 HP, then you've got the SU-122S, which has got a, a slightly different looking box top, um, based on the uh, KV-1 ch chassis instead of the uh, IS, instead of the IS-2, which is why you've got an ISU-152. Um, but that's got 870 HP, so yeah, it also shares the same HP. Let's have a look at Deutschland. Um, for Deutschland, you have got Das Jagdpanther, and Das Jagdpanther has got 850 HP, which is a fair amount. Um, you've also got the Stuart Emil, and the Stuart Emil has got 850 HP, so yeah, the Germans have a pretty large HP pool. Let's have a look. Um, T25AT, we'll, we'll just look at the uh, fixed the, the fixed gun tank destroyers, I think, because targeted tank destroyers, you have to go in and do some things if you don't have them already. So, um, 840 HP, so, yeah, that's lower. Um, have a look at La Belle France with the AMX AC-46, which has got t 820 HP. Mm, not very good there. Um, then, of course, you've got the British with their massively large HP pool of... Um, 1,250 HP, which is, poor that's a very large amount, and um, that makes up all of our Tier 7 fixed gun tank destroyers here, so, yeah, compared to all the other tank destroyers, the uh, ISU 122S has got a, one of, has got, well, the largest HP pool, other than um, the SU-122, um, at the same tier, because they're basically the same sort of thing, but, so, yeah, it's got, um, very good survivability, however, it doesn't have very good hull armor. 90, 90, 60. Um, so, yeah, 60 at the rear, 90 side, 90 front. Yeah, it, it, if you hit, you're generally going to penetrate unless you're at range with some, you know, gun that has penetration drop off very quick or something. Um, but 
That being said, I just played a game where we did win. In fact, I've got the uh, match results here. There we go. This is uh, the match results here. Many crits. Um, being a 122mm gun, and um, as you can see, this 3090 actually bounced three times off me for 720 damage blocks, so yeah, only 90mm of armor. Can't bounce anything. Yeah, say that to the French. Um, <laughs> the French can, bou can bounce off this, um, but yeah, it, it really isn't very thickly armored. Um, that 3090 was just unlucky. He probably shot into the gun mantlet because the gun mantlet is probably the strongest place on the front of this ISU um, other than perhaps the sloping front but yeah, probably the gun mantlet would be the strongest place so if you're going to shoot at it, don't shoot at that pretty much um, so yeah looking at it, it weighs 46.3 tons um, which is a fairly weighty tank for only 600 horsepower um, for only a 600 horsepower engine, uh, it being the V2, well, V2 IS, which is fitted onto the IS2 as well, because they are the same chassis. So that means it only has a 12.95 horsepower per ton ratio. So yeah, that's not very good. You won't be you won't be climbing hills particularly quickly. Um, you don't. Well, the top speed is all right, 43 slash 12 reversing. So uh, it's not particularly fast, but then again it's not particularly slow either. It's not certainly not the fastest thing, but it is fairly mobile um, in that respect. Um, the traverse speed isn't that great though. Um, 29.4 degrees per second. Um, I mean, that's slightly better than the 8015A, and the 8015A is not a particularly moving tank. Only has a 9.97 horsepower per ton ratio, so yeah, it doesn't have a very good traverse speed. Um, it's also not that stealthy, um, with a 19 uh, concealment when stationary compared to the IS-2, which is going to be, well, yeah, 99, but then you got 12.2, yeah, 18. Uh, actually, the 1357 isn't particularly, yeah, that's 18.8, yeah, that's 19. Um, but it is still a very big tank, I mean, if you look at it, there's that. There's the IS-2, it's Panther M10. Yeah, 1357. Well, yeah, 1357 is quite small, really, but still, um, I mean, it's still not that great, I don't think. I mean, I can compare it to other things. Let's have a look here. Uh, no, let's not have a look over there. Cromwell B, 17. Achilles, 21. I was going to say Tog, but Tog 7, yeah. <laughs> Um, Churchill, a gun carrier, 19.4, so yeah, it, it has slight, well, it's actually worse than the gun carrier in terms of concealment. Gun carrier is 19.4, and this is a very, it's a Churchill. I mean, that's, it's not particularly stealthy. Um, you know, the ISU-122S, that's, yeah, if it, if the gun carrier is better than it in concealment rating, it's not that great at concealment. Um, when moving, only 13.1. Yeah, it it it's very big and bulky, so you're not going to be hiding yourself anywhere um, particularly well. Um, f almost 400 me, well, almost three, sorry, just over 350 meters view range, which uh, same as the IS-2, um, you know, same as the Panther M10, same as the AT-15A. It's it's not particularly great view range. Um, but then we're at tier, well, you know, yeah. We're, it's the same as the KV-5, and the KV-5 doesn't have a particularly great view range. So, yeah, it, the view range isn't that great, and the radio range also isn't isn't very good either. I mean, this is the radio it gets: the 10 RKM, 440 meters, same as what's basically on every single high tier um, tank destroyer of the Russians. So, yeah, it's. It's not a particularly great radio. It's terrible radio range at this tier. Um, so, yeah. Not that great. However, the gun is uh, pretty good. Um, if we have a look at it here, it's a 122mm uh, D25S Mod 1944 gun. Um, it's slightly similar to this T25T, however, better. Um, 
It's 122 millimeters, obviously, but it does have a particularly good rate of fire, 8.11 uh, rate of fire rounds per minute, um, with a 11.5 second. Sorry, that's the wrong tank. Sorry, with a, with a um, 6.2 second reload. Um, obviously, with crew crew skills and perks and equipment. Um, rate of fire is 9.6. Um, if we bring up the another particularly fast firing 122mm uh, gun on a tank destroyer at tier 7, we always think of this thing the SU-12244 with its D25S gun. So let's compare the two guns. Um, yeah, I think we'll have this one over there. I was sorting out my guns. There we go. So they're both 122 millimeters. Um, the ISU 122S actually has a better rate of fire, 8.11 compared to the 7.5 of the uh, SU 12244. Um, they both have got 175 average penetration, 217 with APCR, and 64 with HE. Um, the same 390 damage slash 530. Sorry, with high explosive, but then who use high? Who uses high explosive at high tiers other than thinly armored tank destroyers or light tanks or artillery? Um, so, yeah, if you've used a 122mm, then you're used to that sort of thing. Um, the accuracy isn't that great, 0.41, yeah, not that great, and the aim time is also pretty sluggish, 2.9 seconds for both of them. So, the only difference between these two is that the ISU-122 has got a better rate of fire. Um, <laughs> which is, yeah, because... Putting out 390 average damage at six every six seconds is that's pretty good. <laughs> it's quite fun, you know. Before you've even had time to register that your shot has actually hit or bounced, then you've got a new one loaded up to fire off again. Um, so yeah, it does have very good rate of fire. It's a very rapid fire gun with um, 3,748 uh, DPM, which is yeah, that's very good. Um, it would be even better with uh, improved vents, but well, I'm strapped for cash because yeah, because of actually... Oh, I didn't want to fit the toolbox. Damn it. Team out that. There we go. Um, because, of course, I've been buying consumables. I've also been you know buying ammunition and fitting them to my tanks. Well, my new tanks, at least. Um, the it has pretty well it has all right gun depression minus six with eighteen gun elevation, so yeah, there's that. Um two point four seven aim time with the brothers in arms and uh hundred percent crew plus the enhanced gun lane drive, which isn't that it's not that bad really. Um it's above yeah, it's below average. It it's not two point three which is the average sort of aim time for guns. However, it's better than the 2.9 seconds that it would otherwise be. So, yeah, it, it's all right. Um, however, the accuracy 0.38, yeah, that's not that's not too good. Um, the gun traverse limits is what really uh, makes this thing is what is what really limits how much you can do with this because. It's only 8 degrees either side, and comparing it to the gun carrier, which has got 5 degrees either side, there you go, 5 slash 5, um, yeah, it's really not that great. Um, it does have a very limited cone of arc, um, however, and and that that's sort of the problem, because it's sort of the same as the gun carrier in some respects, in the fact that it has a slow turning hull and it also has very limited gun arc. It's not quite as bad as the gun carrier, however, that is still very, very thin gun arc. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's what's going to catch you out here. Um, yeah, the gun arc is, is not great. Um, and the gun is average 122 um, Russian tank destroyer gun. So, yeah. Um, and that's the base stats. Um, Obviously, fit your consumables and whatnot. Um, the first game that I played in this, I couldn't, act, I didn't actually have any consumables fitted because I didn't have enough cash. Because I barely had enough credits to actually fit ammunition into this thing to fit the full 32 round capacity into the tank. I didn't actually have any spare cash. I had, 
I had less than a thousand credits when I went into the battle, and it's actually the replay that I have for this, um, for this tank, and uh, I was hit by artillery, I was left on 12 HP with, an, with a damaged gun, which was fun. Um, Inaccurate 122 made more inaccurate with a damaged gun, so yeah, that, that wasn't fun. Um, but yeah, I now have, actually have consumables. So yeah, it's a 32 round capacity, which means that if you're going to load up, say, you know, 8 APCR rounds, you'll only have 24. Um, you'll only have an, a 24 APCR, a, AP even. Um, so with the rapid fireness of this gun, you may end up running out of ammunition if you're if you're actually shooting a lot. Plus, uh, something else to point out, each shell costs over a thousand credits. So, yeah, that, that, that match that I showed the... there you go. This match, 35,020 base credits after repair and resupply, only 17,000. I paid 17,425 credits just on the ammunition. I mean, the actual tank, although I had to... All I had to do to the repair the tank was prepare, was prepare a couple of tracks, and that was it. Um, my track was damaged by a friendly AT-15A, I think, because he was trying to shoot the um, AMX-3090 that was shooting at me. But, um, yeah, the ammunition is very expensive, so that's something to, keep, to bear in mind. Um, as for the consumables that you can fit, um, you've got Caminet, not a bad idea if you're stationary. Um, you know, stationary, use that, put that gun, that, put that rate of fire to use, um, definitely do that. Um, combine that with binos as well, not a bad choice. Uh, coated optics as well, not a bad choice if you want to actually go assault gun, which is what the tank was used for. Um, if you want to go assault gun mode, then sure, go ahead and fit coated optics, because you'll probably get more beneficial than binos. Um, cyclone filter, in case you're... Uh, Engine keeps getting damaged. Um, gun lane drive is a must-have. Um, the gun rammer, not so much on this tank. However, you know, rapid fire one, two, two, make it more rapid fire. Why not? Go ahead, bung one of them on. I I nicked it off of my Jag Tiger 88, so I still have to get a new one for the Jag Tiger, unless I want to keep demounting and remounting various large-caliber tank and rammers. But um, spore liner, nah. You don't you don't have good armor. Don't bother with that. Uh, tanks filled with CO2 in case you keep getting set on fire. Yeah. Uh, enhanced torsion spot uh, suspension. Um, you don't need it for the extra load limit because you know that's that's an extra eight tons of stuff that you can put on there, and you're not going to run out any time soon of um, load limit. So the only reason you'd get this was for um, suspension durability, which, eh, cashing out half a million credits just to get 20% extra suspension durability, mm, I don't know, it seems like a waste. Um, improve vents, you could go ahead and slap that on to, uh, you might even be able to get the rate of fire down to, um, under six seconds, you never know. Um, so, go ahead and slap that on if you want, it's an extra... 60,000 credits, or 600,000, sorry, credits. Um, wet Amarac, in case your Amarac keeps getting damaged. Um, yeah, toolbox is always useful, if you want. Uh, go ahead and fit one of them on. Uh, that that spare toolbox was from my Panzer II, because I've replaced it with improvements. So yeah. And um, now for the crew. It's a crew of five, um, and being part of the Berlin Quartet, um, the crew does come with Brothers in Arms already trained, so that's why I already have Brothers in Arms on here. Um, so, for your, for your sergeant, um, actually these people were specially named, and I don't know whether that's like historically accurate, because something that I should have mentioned at the start of the video is, uh, is that um, these markings are of... I think the Guards Battalion or something, and maybe the Guards... I, the IS-2's markings are definitely of um, a, the Guards, because you can tell by the uh, bear with the bear over the uh, star there. And I know that this was made famous by the picture of it by the um, 
Brandenburg Gate, I think it was, and the famous historical picture of an IS-2 at the Brandenburg Gate, and I think these were the markings of it, and so they put that on. And um, looking at it, it's probably easier to see because this has got the um, winter camouflage on, so the white lines are actually being covered up by the white camouflage. Yeah, great idea. Um, but as you can see, that also has the uh, cross marked on the turret with the uh, stripe around, so I'm guessing that they're both from the guards, but I could be wrong. This could be from some assault gun regiment or something, I'm not too sure. Um, but, yeah. Um, I don't know whether these specially named crew were, you know, whether 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 they're specially named or whether it's just what happens when you get a 100% trained crew, I'm not too sure. Um, but either way, our commander here, who's also the uh, radio operator, I'm training six cents on him. Um, after six cents, probably go signal boosting because 440 meters signal range isn't very good. I mean, for, take for example, um, Prokhorovka, the the famous camp in Ovka. If you would, uh, in which case that would be Malinovka. Yeah, there's too many too many Ovkas. Um, but for example, there, um, if they go slightly away from you on on either side you'll lose track of them because you don't have the signal range so definitely want to get your signal boosting up and then go for relay or situational awareness because either of them will be good um, call for vengeance in case you're well I, I mean it's always useful sure thing go ahead and put that on I mean could be beneficial to your team could win you the match you never know um, but six cents is always a, a must-have on on tanks. Anything other than the tog, um, eagle eye also always useful because if you combine that with dead eye, um, you'll be doing lots of module damage, and you can see exactly why you why your enemy is cursing from all of your module damage that you're causing them. So, eagle eye is always useful to have. Um, jack of all trades if you want. Um, recon always useful, and then mentor. I don't see the point, and then you've got your three common skills because you already have brothers in arms. So then for your gunner. Um, I am training Deadeye on, on the gunner because, you know, large caliber gun, lots of module damage will be nice. Um, so yeah, I'm going ahead and doing that. Um, improve accuracy during turret rotation. Yeah, you you don't have a turret and the gun arc is so thin that there's no point in doing that. Um, if it was something with a large gun arc like the 8015A, possibly might want to go with snapshot on that, but on this, no. Um, armorer, n just use your repair kit, and if you've already used it, then you're still going to be horribly inaccurate, so I don't really see... Yeah, I, I don't really see how helpful that would be. Um, then designate target, yeah, sure, go ahead, always useful, may, may, may help you um, guess shot someone, you never know. More XP credits. Um, then you've got your three common skills. Um, now for the driver, you'll definitely want clutch braking to uh, increase your traverse speed because you will be traversing the hull a lot to keep tracking people. Um, Off-road driving is uh, always useful. Go ahead and uh, use that. Um, go ahead and put that on afterwards if you want, or even swap it out. I know it up to you. Um, smooth ride? No, you're you're very inaccurate anyway. So firing on the move, you're just never going to hit unless Hand of Starling guides your shot. In which case lucky you. Um, so, yeah, I don't really see the point in that. Um, preventive maintenance, in case you keep getting set on fire, then go ahead and do that. Um, controlled impact, um, you could do. You you could do, but I don't. No, probably not, um, actually, because you don't have very good armour, um, so, yeah, you shouldn't really be ramming things uh, in the ISU. Um, then you've got your common skills and perks, so you just don't ram things pretty much. Then your two get, then your two loaders, which is probably why you have a better rate of fire, because you have two loaders instead of the one on the SU-12244. Um, but so I'm training Adrenaline Rush on one, and I'm also training Safe Storage on the other, um, because yeah, that's always useful for the Amarak durability, and then that's always useful because you know, Adrenaline Rush. Um, intuition, in case you use a lot of APCR, then you know, go ahead and do that. Why not? Um, then you've got your common skills. So overall, it's a very bulky, um, not very hidden, and 
not a particularly good horsepower per ton ratio tank destroyer that has a pretty good 122 mm tank destroyer gun. Um, if you can, if you can actually get it, get it, get your hands on it, then go ahead and do it. I mean, I've been enjoying this more than I have been the IS-2 because, as as much fun as an IS-2 is, this I just seem to do more in. I I don't die as much. Um, I haven't died actually once in this yet, but then I have played only two games, so yeah, it's a bit difficult to sort of gauge them on, on those two games, so I just seem to do more in this, I don't know, I just seem to be better at the SU-12244 than I am the IS-2 right now, so... Sorry, the ISU-122S, not the SU-12244. Anyway, um, if you can go ahead and get it, then do. Um, it's a pretty good tier 7 tank destroyer, um, it's just not particularly mobile. That's really it. Um, so, yeah. Oh, thank you for watching, and goodbye.